and the, the effect will be that the house is going to be clean. That's the basic, but in Buddhism and how that's work in Buddhism, that's who, now that's work with the second step of karma. So first thing we have to think about karma is what is karma? So Kempo Shoga Rinpoche explains that our karma is actually our thought. That thing that's never stop and that's always carry on. And you have to ask your, me kind of wait, but wait, how come our thought can manifest? And uh, in uh, Tibetan Buddhism or every, I can say even every religion or every spiritual path, we have that Buddha consciousness, if you prefer, that makes things manifest uh, in our world. So, for example, so if you take the cause and effect again, someone who wanted to build a brain, if you back in 18th century, the brain never existed. If say, the people from the 18th century was coming today, they, were, they will be freaking out, seeing uh, brain fraying and so on. So, but that's been coming from the thought, so karma. So the intention of uh, to creating something, having an idea, that's another type of karma, and the action we do. So that's for the everyday karma. Now, if we talk about the difference between bad karma, negative, good karma, and uh, neutral karma. So negative karma, that's what we call the samsaric karma. So that's pretty much everyday people. That we all have that kind of the negative thought and depression and so on, so on. So I can't get out of that. That is the negative karma. So that's usually negative karma that we have. Neutral karma, that's where we are unable to think what to do or what to not do. And positive karma, that's positive thought. There is also, uh, some, there is something also very important in a karma law that uh, likes the cause and effect. For example, if we burn our good karma this life without being safe, yes, without progressing somewhere. So karma is like a bank. So imagine you got a thousand pound, a thousand pound in, in a karma bank and all your life you spend it, spend it, spend it, spend it, spend it. At the end, you're going to end up with zero or minus a thousand pound. And that's going to be karma debt. That means that if you burn your good karma and uh, end up at zero, and you left with your negative karma. So that's also working another way. So let's talk back to the cause and effect. So the cause and effect we have talked about, we plant a seed and uh, we got an effect. So for example, you plant a roses, a, a roses seed, and you got a roses. So if we come back on the cause and effect, now that's using the karma. So if we got a bad, let's say for negative karma, if we got a bad intention, so we plant the seed of bad intention, and that seed's growing up on something, that's going to give an effect. But now we're talking also about our karma. So you got a good karma and a negative karma. So let's say if you got a good karma and you put a, a bad intention on negative karma, that's going to minus your good karma and uh, building up your, your, your bad karma. So that's going to end up on, because the cause and effect never fail at some point, that's going to end up on something not so good for you. That's the story of bad karma. The story of uh, Good karma, it's the same idea. So this time we, we want to plant something good and we want, for example, help someone in difficulty. So I'm going to help that person in difficulty. Got that, that, that seed of good karma. You're making the action and so on, so on, so on. So in that state, you're going to be uh, uh, good karma. But uh, there is something on top of that. It's called the merit. 
so that cause and effect karma and merit. So as practitioner, for example, we do practice. So for a normal practitioner, you got certain amount of merit. For a medium practitioner, you got another uh, amount of merit. And for a vagina practitioner, you got uh, another amount of merit. So the but of some the goal of someone who wants to practice and want to transform his life is turn the karma over. So that's the reason we study on the Nandros of the first uh, thought. What the first thought? What is the uh, story of how to transform negative karma to good karma? But a bit more than that is understanding also the merit. That's the first thing we study in Andro. And when we do that, we purify. So if we take the story of Monk, we purify our, our karmic debt and we're building up our, our, our good karma. After there is different type of karma, such the karma of this life, the karma of next life, the karma of past life, and so on and so on. That gonna to have a repercussion, so that's a law of cause and effect. Law of cause and effect, that's imagine a lake and there is a drop of rain that's fall in that lake. That's the merit, and that makes tons, uh, tons of uh, wave. So imagine when you practice full, full blast, you're, you got a, a, the rain, Going to the right, and you got tons of, of good waves, so you got the merits that improve your life. So, you necessarily, you're gonna to see your life improving at some point, not just in this life, but in future life too. So, that's the reason the cause and effect and karma and also merit are very important in for practitioners, even for normal people. Garchen Rinpoche says that if we were very aware of what is karma, we be no war, no crime, no no fight because people we know that oh if I do that very negative things that's gonna to end up on my face. So that's what we need to understand today is so to re, to finish the teaching so cause and effect that you plant a seed and you're gonna to have the result. Karma is your thinking, so negative karma, negative thinking, neutral karma, neutral thinking, positive karma, positive thinking. And merit, that's uh, when we practice to the highest. Uh, that means when we got kindness, selflessness, and love. And we that's when we practice to the highest. And doing this, we we multiply our merit. So when those three are, are working together, we we are on a higher space of enlightenment. Also, what we need to understand that uh, Buddha is with us. So Buddha is not in the sky. Buddha is not a, anyone else with us. And when we pray a deity, for example. Tara, we also activate Tara within us. Um, it's not really separate of us, as, as Gertrude Rinpoche teaches that everything is mine, and the deity is part of our mind. Uh,